Hi, Angela Toma here. You can hear me now. Turn on the volume. Today we are going to risk, risk gluing this on with Fabri-Tac. This little beautiful linen cutwork vintage doily thingy. <laughs> Okay, it, 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 I say risk because I'm terrified that it's going to um, show through on the glue. So, before we start that, let's get our ties out of the way. I'm going to get some little clips. And I'm going to untie this. And then I'm going to fold these guys up and put them to the inside. Just by folding them over and da da da, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm going to just flip them to the inside so they are clean out of the way. Clip them carefully. You don't want them to run. There we go. Okay. That one's out of the way. Now let's get this one out of the way. You stay over there. Thank you. We just don't want any glue on these guys because, well, heck, they'll get all icky and weird. So I'm just rolling this down, 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 down. And I'm going to oh. <laughs> it's not gonna clip on that way now, is it? <laughs> oh no. There we go. The journal's gotten kind of fat. I know. You know me. I make a fat journal. Now we may have to move these clip parts out of the way when we get to gluing right about there. Okay. I do have to say, I am nervous about doing this. I have a clean mat down, a clean wax paper. To protect my journal here and there <laughs> and um, I'm going to start in the middle with the Fabri-Tac and I'm going to smooth it down as much as I can because I really 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 don't want it to show through. I have brought along a wet end of a towel just in case I need it and it's clean a nice clean one these are flower towels that I use and and now I'm letting my Fabri-Tac come down in the bottle my needle up there excuse my reach and I guess maybe what I'll have to do is just start a little bit at a time. And pray for the best. My glue bottle seems to have something stuck in it. It gets that way. Probably should have used the um, original bottle because you can cut the tips on those a little bit better. Oh, my husband's home. He had an appointment today out of town.
Okay, center. And center. We want to be sure that it's centered because if it's not, it's not going to go on the right. And it looks like they just about match up that way. Um, so far so good. So um, to prep this, I um, ironed it good and I ironed this over where it needed to be and then I stuck a piece of like what's it called stitch witchery it um, has a paper on one side and you iron it down and then you peel it and then you iron the fabric over it that's what I used on both ends to hold that down Okay, so let's flip this up a little bit. And... Uh, okay, we're going to go down about the next inch or so. Get that glue bit off on my old towel. Sorry, my hands are in the way, but I gotta get that glue out of the bottle as best as I can. So I'm just doing a small section at a time, just so that I can smooth the glue down and it won't dry out too fast. The reason I'm smoothing the glue down is because I don't want it to absorb through the fabric. Lay that on its side. So, and this also gets it right off on the ends for you, which you really kind of want because you want the ends definitely secured down. Okay, let's go down that far. We don't want that, do we? Kind of hard not to get hair in this house. With cats and dog and... I know, that's noisy. It's the noise of fun. Hello? Okay. Just getting the glue off my fingers. As I go, so far so good. Okay, so now those are going to be right about there. I don't really want to have glue seeping up through those holes. Of course, we are. Um, pushing the glue down a little bit so that shouldn't hurt.
Oh, this is going to be beautiful. Okay. I'm going to go right about there. Right about there. going to do these little scallops. Okay, I'm still recording, right? <laughs> I guess it was just the clicking of my Clip here. Thought my camera clicked. Oh, a little too much there. That's going to be okay though. Just make sure we rub the rest of these down because obviously that has to happen. Right here. I don't know if you can see that up there. No, just a little bit showing through right there. It's not bad. Okay, so there's part of it. Well, let's go to the back. Whew. Glad part of it's done. <laughs> Going to wipe that tip off again. Get that excess glue off the top of the metal of my tip here. Okay. some hand power here to get this thing working good. finger off there. Okay. Yeah, I can see that I'm going to have to pull this up here and make sure I fit it up along the top edge. Here we go, next part. Get in there where I left off and didn't get enough glue. OK. 
Okay. So I didn't get a chance to finish working on this yesterday, so I still have some ephemera to make for it. And I am want to make quick ephemera. So So we still have that to do. It's the thing with journals is you um, it's really hard to know, you know, how much it's going to take, how many videos it's going to take. You know, if you're like me and, and you want to video the whole process, then, you know, everything takes a lot of time. And it takes a lot of videos and, you know, if you want to see the whole process. So. There's a fuzzy. Don't want that fuzzy stuck under the white fabric because it will definitely show, won't it? bit came out there, out of that little cutwork hole there. Just a little bit more here. Let's take that glue glob off the end there. We don't want that. And this is an old doily, so it's it does have a little bit of staining on it just from being a doily. Just from being somebody's treasure. That one showed through a little bit there, too. Same place as the other one. I guess I just got too much under it. Hmm. That one must have came right back in the bottle. <laughs> I hope I'm on camera. <laughs> if I'm not, I'm very sorry. I def definitely had my eyes down here. And one more right here. Just. Oh, got that one on the book, didn't I?
There we go. Okay. We did it. We did it. Yay! Oh, there it is. It is beautiful. Oh my goodness, I love it. So I was going to sew buttons on here, and I'll tell you, I looked at my uh, Mother of Pearl buttons, and it's very hard to separate me from them. I don't mind, but I'm also concerned because they're so fragile that, you know, if they get bumped or shoved in a bookcase or anything like that, they're going to break. And then it's not going to be so pretty up there. Look at that one. Isn't that a beauty? Ooh! Anyway, I have enough of them to do it. But I also have... Let me get this glue off my finger. I also have... Um, I have these. And they are like these little flowers here. See those? So I've decided I'm going to use those on it. Um, this one, the little sequin, is out of place. We won't use it. We will only pick the ones that have nice sequins on them. Now each of these has a little um, uh, kind of a plasticky piece on it. We're going to see how that works. still going to have to kind of clean that up as I go. This is the center one. Woo. So it would go right there. Next one. See, I don't know if those will come off. I guess they will. I think it would be better if they could come off because this glue has an acetate in it and I think it might just eat through that plasticky, styrofoamy foam stuff. And so it may not stick anyway. right here. Oh, there's one of those little fruit flies in here. I'm not even drinking a glass of wine or anything. It's too early anyway. But, uh, I have one little glue spot on there that I can't see now, so I guess it's okay. Right there. Don't want to rub on it too much because it's that linen-y stuff and it will just it will just get dirty anyway. So I'm going to peel this off. And it's just a little foam sticky foam backing on it. I think that will be better. Let's throw the extra pieces back there so I can pick them up later with a towel. And that way they're not going to end up on the book somewhere where I can't get them off. Okay. I don't know what that was stuck to my finger. 
glue, I guess. Anyway, oh no, look at that. The little thing just came off of it. Well, that just irks me. Irk, irk. Hard to hold that. should be glued down for a while. I might have to use a different glue. We'll see. Okay, let's go down to this end. And I'm not putting them along here. I don't think it needs it. I think it has its own beauty there. And probably it did here too. You know, I don't know. I just thought that it would look nice. But we'll see. They might all fall off and I might be sewing down those other buttons. I was going to just sew them on the fabric with my um, sewing machine because it sews buttons on. But then I was afraid I'd hit the edge of the mother of pearl and break it. Okay. We'll see if this one breaks off too. Maybe that was that one I said we weren't going to use and then I used it. Probably was. I don't see it down there. Oh, look at that. It's coming along. Oh no, there it is. That's the one we don't want to use. So how is everybody today? I um, am doing well. It's a um, beautiful day outside. Uh, we've been having rain, but it's going to go away for a while and I guess summer's coming back. <laughs> Snow in the mountains. I don't know about last night, but a couple nights ago we had snow in the mountains, which is wonderful. We always need lots of snow up there because it's about where our fires always start is up in our mountains it's because of lightning strikes. And I'm sure that's the way it is for most of us in the U.S. Don't really know. I'm only guessing. But I've got this button upside down and I can't figure out how to turn it around. Oops, put that towel back over there, Angela. Okay. Yeah, that button just came off too. Well, we'll glue it back on. There's no escaping little pearly thing, little blingy thing. You are getting glued down whether you like it or not.
Ooh, that one does not feel like it's going to glue very well. Okay, I know I have a little tool here that will help me. I wonder what it is with it. Hopefully it's right here. Now watch, it won't work. A Jewel Picker by Marvy. Hey, picks it right up. Let's clean off that tip. There's no glue left on it. I, when I pulled it away, it all pulled off. And my fingers are so darn sticky. Well, it can never go 100%, you know, no matter how bad you want it to. Doesn't matter whether you're on video or just at home. There we go. That'll have to do. Okay. So what's happening is when I press down on these to push it down is that they are um, popping off. So something to be aware of with these little buttons. They're not even buttons. They're little, what are they called? Bling stickers by Recollections. That'd be Michael's, wouldn't it? I think I've seen them at Joanne's. Okay. We love our glue, but sometimes, let's see if I can do this without popping that off. Hopefully it'll stick. And hopefully these are going to stick now that I'm going to flip them over. What do I have that I could set them on? Um, oh, I know. Let me get a towel or something. Something to kind of cushion them. So that they're not just hitting this glass down here. bits off of there while we have the opportunity. Okay. I'm going to set that on that. I'm going to turn it this way so I can see these a little bit better. 
And it's crooked. We don't want a crooked one. So once again, peeling off all the sticker part. piece there, I guess. Clean off that glue tip a little bit. Exhausting. There's, you, I'm hardly even breathing with it. Although you can probably hear me huffing and puffing over here because I'm. Because I'm trying to be so careful. Okay. Let's see if we can. You can almost peel that off in one peel, but but then the little ends are still stuck. If I'd have known I was going to have to peel these, I would have done that. I should have known, but I didn't. Didn't think I even think about it until I peeled it off of there. Off again. Attach our glue. Oh, it went right up my sleeve. Of my towel and get my fingers cleaned off a little bit. I use a lot of the flower towels in here. Number one, they're cheap to buy in packs of six, or sometimes you can get them at a dozen. And uh, they work wonderful for paint and stuff, or for padding your table if you need a pad. Now this one looks like it could pop off to me. And it's because it's on that curve. So let's hope it doesn't. Okay, I'm going to turn that around. And let's see, that one looks like it's on nicely. Again,
<laughs> I'd rather have that pop off than to have the whole button pop off. Just thinking that as I was pressing it down and then I felt that thing come off on my finger. So where did it go? There it is. on there pretty good. Whoops. Peel and stick, peel and stick. Or peel and glue. Unstick and then glue. This has been the funnest album I've ever worked on. Oh, they're all fun. Who am I kidding? They're all fun. <laughs> so Josephine's been wondering if anybody has any tips or tricks for not for the unfinished journals is there a good way to finish them do you have any good ideas the only thing for me is I'm finding is I need to switch it up sometimes and sometimes like I was telling you on the phone yesterday Josephine is I have three three boxes that have unfinished items in them and it, the, my spring journal is one of them. I have not finished it. And it's because I get bored of working on it. Because it, maybe because it has too much ephemera in it. Or because I put too many um, pockets in it and I have more ephemera to do. I'm not really sure what it is. I mean, it could even be a color or something that. But I've had a hard time on the Spring Journal. Part of it may be because it's a design that I made. And I had certain expectations in my mind about it. Or, <laughs> you know, I really don't know what, what my problem is with it. I um, looked at it yesterday and now I feel like I want to finish it. So, I think it just depends on how you're feeling about the journal. Is there something about it that, it that you might not be liking? So that's one thing to go back and check and see if, if there's a page that's bothering you for some reason. It could be a color, it could be a food, if you're making a recipe journal. Um, it could be a recipe you're not sure will work out. Um, there's there's so many reasons that it could be why you're not finishing it. Um, the other thing is, is you might just get bored with the one you're working on and you need to switch it up and start a new one. And like I told you, if you the, the baskets I buy are from the dollar store. And um, I use them. <laughs> And I use them and use them and use them. I'll show them to you here in just a second. So, um, let's let that dry. Shh. Everybody quiet. Quiet. Okay. Now. Let's just set this over here and I'll bring up my basket. Okay. This is the basket I have going for this journal. In this little one is 
some of the pieces that I cut and some more that I thought I might want to cut. And um, just some leftover avocado dyed paper. Now, I may or may not use these pieces in this journal. I haven't gotten there yet. I'm sure I'm going to use the bird and this and this. Oh, and that too, probably. But I put in here my ephemera. Now you're going to see it down below here too. As I go through and pull more things out. These are my papers that I like to glue on. So maybe you would want to put, if you use book pages, maybe you'd want to have your book in here. Let me set that off to the side. Now this is the book I've been tearing pages from to use as backgrounds and stuff. This one, and then I have a drawer right beside me here on the right side of me that has copy dyed papers in it, and the one above it has really old vintage book pages. So these are part of, of that drawer. Then I also pulled out a full page because I know I'm going to use it. This is what was left over of the um, Japanese paper. Okay, now these are just bits of different ephemera, and these are the ones I want to make quick ephemera out of to put inside of that journal. I think there's too much of it, but I also don't plan on backing it. I plan on just coloring the backs, either with a coffee dye or um, just to um, use the vintage photo or the espresso inks on them. So I may just pattern the back with a stencil. So those are in there. Now I looked at putting these in on the signature pages, on the backs of every signature page. They were too big. So those can now come out of here and I'll put them over here because that's closest to my fabric drawer where those go. This was the other part of the ephemera that I'm not going to use. So I'm going to take these out of here now and I'm going to put them back. Um, where is that? Oh, I haven't made a folder for you. I'm going to put them up there with the napkins and stuff that I'm not using. Now these are sheets that I may still want to use in this journal. Oh, and this is something my hubby needed, so I got that out and it's back. So that goes back over there towards the place where it goes. So these are just extra papers that I may want to use in this journal. Extra craft paper. These were just fabric swatches. These are from Rachel at Roxy Creations. And there's some beautiful papers in here. Oh my goodness. So these are just fabrics that I have. And so I'll put them with the hearts. They need to go into the fabric drawer. This we used in the in the book, and it is ready to go back to the um, lace drawer. So it's going to go up there. Okay, so that leaves us with just bits and pieces that I think that I might want to use or could use in this journal. There's some dictionary pages. There's some of my... I think that's the raspberry tea dyed papers. Um, just some junk papers and, um, you know, leftover bits and pieces of pieces I thought I might use in here. So I'm going to put this all back together. Now, I always put a little box inside of my big box, one way or another. And um, I go around and I gather up things that I think I might want for this journal and I'll put them in my box. And 
then as I'm going along, like I started thinking about this cover and what I wanted to do with it. Well, I ended up gathering up dozens of doilies and crocheted doilies and um, embroidered, old embroidered dish cloths and dish, um, not dish, pillowcases and I had dozens of them. Scarves, handkerchiefs, and so I had to spend an evening just going through each of those pieces, stepping back, taking a look, until I could bring it down to three items. Once I brought it down to three items, then I had to knock it down to one, unless I wanted to use one plus. So I did have a couple of other pieces here that I really liked, but I didn't want to cover this up. So I ended up putting the rest away, and that's when I decided to fold this and put the bling on the ends. And like I said, I was going to use the buttons, but, you know, this worked out fine. Um, so, and I love it. I absolutely love it. So I worked it down to one of these and then I had to pull out my buttons and so there are some things that come later um, as I or as I'm working along. So um, you know in the beginning this basket can get really full and during the process if you take out the things you're no longer using you know you can you can put those away and then you're like you know your mind can think a little more clearly about what you want to do um the other thing that oh i was going to tell you the size of this i don't remember what i told joe marie it was josephine sorry um centimeters you don't want that well some of you might want centimeters but you might not want them from me <laughs> oh my goodness Oh, gosh, I have a mat right here. This is, oh, let's just do it this way. It is about 12, 13, 14. It's about 15 inches. I think I told Josephine it was 14. So it's about 15 inches by um, 11 and a half inches wide and it's four inches tall this way four inches now your inside dimensions of course are smaller as you know because there's those edges around it um, it's about 11 inches uh, 10 and a half on the inside by 12 13 and a half maybe 14 on the inside come on miss libby come out of there you can't hide I see you. And, um, how did that end? Oh, okay. That's how it ended up there. And then this one. I just buy a little one. It's not very big. I mean, what is it? It is five on the inside. Five and a fourth by seven and a fourth. That's inside measurements. And it's just, it gives me just enough space to put the little ephemera pieces, some that I've made or some that I'm considering making. So this simplifies the process of um, getting stuff together for a journal. And a lot of the journal makers and um, scrapbook makers and the um, mini album makers use this same format. Um, so, my other tools I have behind me here are set up because there are things I use the most, like certain ephemera, like these, came out of one of these drawers over here. And in front of me I have my toolbox, which is scissors, all kinds of scissors, um, needles, um, extra caps for my glues in case I lose one on the floor. Um, 
extra pins you know it's all tools types type things I have two awls so I I use both of those I have tape measures um, because I like to measure and then I have my um, blingy drawer and um, I have three different kinds of bling so I have three drawers there each of these has three drawers in them then I have my buttons and then I have my instant fabrics that I like to use these are always nearby so I have those so these those kinds of things I don't have to get out and put in here now I do have like my butterfly and my bug box if I'm making a nature journal I'm probably going to just put this in here and then I can throw more bugs into it as I find them it makes it easier that way so I have a box uh, that is strictly mostly butterflies and there is some bugs in it not real bugs and then of course my next two drawers are stacked on top of each other and the top one is all for book binding it has um, alligator clips on the top and um, it's full I mean it's full of book binding supplies and then my next three drawers down are all washi tape the drawers are not full they're just a mess so and then up behind me here also I have these three organizer drawers that's these kind of drawers that slip in and out and fall off the rails yeah I have those behind me but then I have a shelf on top of that and then I have my pens and my pencils my watercolor pencils and then I have a lamp and then I have um, these beautiful little containers that I got from um, they're like the old pie containers I got them from Hobby Lobby and they have um, glues on them and it's two tiers so it's all glues then I have my um, my stamp holder my my squishy pad whatever you call it then I have my uh, Nouveau drops above that and then I have a great big metal one that's three tiers high from Hobby Lobby and on the very top of it is my bottle of water that I use in this room and my water spray my spray bottle then I have all my uh, ink refills and ink sprays and then on the bottom one I just have embossing things and I have cups with my um, my blush brushes you know for getting in stencils and just just different things I have three cups in there one has water brushes in it and the other one has uh, distressing crayons so that's my setup behind me and to my right and my left is my my paper on the left and then I have paper under my desk and uh, you know right beside me is all of my paper that is junk paper that has been used and abused and torn and ripped and I have several drawers and they're all separated into categories so that helps me to stay a bit organized now when I am making a journal and even when I made mini albums my air, whole area gets covered and you know most of the time I can't find anything but um, <laughs> it all works out you find it eventually but um, a couple other tips I've found is that I'm going to do this today I, I have to keep these refilled if they move too slow I get too frustrated and I it just irritates me at myself so I know I have to keep them filled at least you know every two weeks I have to refill so what I'll do is I'll go through and refill all my bottles I'll clean all my tips 
and I will put things away that don't belong in here. I'll clean all these tips and I'll make sure everybody's got pins and covers and um, things like that because those things stall me out and I don't like to do them. So I have to be sure that I do those things. Now what else? Because I mod, pod, mod podge a lot or podge a lot, whatever you want to call it, I buy this brush that is this white nylon brush. It's just called the Royal Taclon. It's a three quarter inch brush. It is my gesso brush and my, not my gesso brush, it is my Mod Podge brush. It gets glue all over this furl and I clean this about once a week. I leave it in just a tiny, not even an inch of water down there. It's just enough so it soaks right up into the top here. It stays wet. I leave it here all week while I'm working and it only has a little bit of water in it because about that much. Just a little bit. Um, I leave it because and I didn't turn my lights on today. Sorry about that. Um, because I might need to use it. Um, here's the other thing I have. This is my little work box. That's a little tag from Martha. It belongs in my little book over there. I keep my pencils here. Um, this is the other thing. I need to clean my tools today. Uh, keep my scissors, my um, just the instant things. Sometimes I will throw things in here that need to be put somewhere else. I'll put that up there with those. Josephine, here's one of those broken things I made. We were talking about the corner things and what, what ones I use now. And I use the Tim Holtz. Keep a fingernail file in here. My bone folder, my favorite bone folder. And my second favorite. There's one I have that always punches a hole in my paper. It is in that drawer back there and I probably should just throw it away. I will get new tips on and I will sharpen all my pencils. That helps me so that I'm ready for the next time. I have a file, fingernail file here. That's for filing the edges of paper if I need to. So those are some of the setups that I have so I don't have to of course, you know, I always run around the room try to find things because my brain is constantly going like this and and I need things to do. I'm going like this, like, you know, that old saying, this old man, he played one. Yeah, that's the one. Well, this old Ange, <laughs> her brain just keeps going and going and going. It's nonstop and I will I will be started I will have an idea and it always always changes because of how quickly my brain is snapping things over and saying oh this is going to work better oh that might not work at all but gosh I really want to try it that kind of stuff so what else can I tell you um if you ask me if I keep my stencils clean no, absolutely not. I do not. Do I clean my um, Do I clean these? No. I stamp them off. But I don't clean them. It's you know, I do have the cleaner and if I get to a point where this really looks bad, I'll clean it. But I, it likes it loves me and I love it. So I, I'm not a great, as they say, stencil mom or a great um, stamp mom, but I love my stamps and my stencils. But um, so those I don't worry about. A lot of people do, and I'm glad you do because I know you're supposed to clean them. I know that, but it's one of those things. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, so 
I would start with this. Oh, I do keep a, my junk jar over here full of um, quick threads or, or, or ribbons and laces that I use often. Or things that I've tore up, they get stuffed in here. And under that I have another uh, plastic box that the lid just pulls open and it's full of those too. I keep my sewing machine over here on the right. It's my little Gracie. Hi Grace. You're a good baby lock. And my iron is normally over there on the left with my big sewing machine. Oh, and when I do my cleaning, I will come and this will get completely clean. I love my glass mat. I know it's noisy. I know people can't stand the noise. But I am so comfortable working on it. It does help me to stay in view up there because you can't very well slip off of it. It's up off the table. But I will clean this and I love love this also because it cleans off super easy. You just spray it with the window cleaner and it all comes right off. It's beautiful. Um, what else could be stopping you? Um, I would say that you're probably just you might need to move on to that next piece and then come back to that one and you know when you feel like you can work on it. I, I have so many unfinished things so um, you know I would say that that might be what what's causing it is that you're started there but maybe you're stuck on a design element on it and you just need to maybe get yourself another box and start a new project and then something will strike you about the other one just like with me the other day I saw the spring journal and I was like I feel like working in that again so you know I need to finish it and do the walkthrough it's almost done but the other thing that slows me down way down I've told you before, I do not like to bind books. Um, this one, I absolutely loved. But I don't like to make the hardcover books. I didn't like it in many albums, and I don't like it now. It's easy to do. It's not that. It's just the measuring and the time and, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's just not my favorite. And because I know I need to get that space between the spine and the front and back covers, and what if it's not right, then the book's not going to open and close correctly, and I, I think it's, there's a lot of worry in it for me, it, so it causes a little stress. Um, so it might be the binding process. Is Do you like to do the binding process? If not, then find one that you love. I love doing this one. Look at this. I mean it is fabulous and it's beautiful. It's and you can stuff it so much. You know there's so much you can do to it. But I loved it. The whole process. It was it's been great. I, I just love and I love doing the binding that way. So that might be the binding process that has you. Um, so it's probably it's either you need to switch it up and start a new project and then come back to the one. It could be that you need to make all your pockets first. It could be that you need to make your ephemera first and then know that you might not use it all. But at least you'll have, you know, pockets and ephemera to put in the pockets if you do that first. You know, there's lots of different ways we can do it. Now, making this ephemera first may be why this journal is so much easier because I'm not having to go back through and fill every pocket because I had some of the stuff partially pre-made yet yeah, we added to it but you know it was all quite pre-made 
and it was it was easy I loved it I loved the whole process it was wonderful so I do think that's part of it so anyway that's my hints if anybody else has hints that they'd like to share down in the description box please do um, and you know make sure you read through them guys and girls and um, check it out and see if somebody has a good suggestion that might work for you or that you know maybe they have a question and you can answer their question you know I may not be able to answer it so anyway that's all I have for today and um, we may come back one more time on this journal because I do have to finish it up today and get all the ephemera in it and the little pieces of paper I want to put in there these guys so okay well I hope there was some helpful trips and tricks there and thanks for hanging out with me while we got our journal ready and got our new cover on it let those guys unwrinkle yeah I think it looks good. Yeah, it's almost done. It just needs the extra bits and pieces in it. And then it will be done. Okay. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today. And um, I hope you all have a good day. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>